In today's video, we get smoky with EVAP leaks. So guys, a couple of months ago, we did a video on this 2006 Forester that only has 33,000 miles on it. I've done quite a bit of work to it, did not make videos on it because it's kind of repetitive stuff we've covered over and over and over again, uh, which was time of belt service and coolant replacement, transmission gear oil, uh, rear differential gear oil, oil and filter, all the kind of stuff to get this car up and going with it being a 2006 with 33,000 miles. Now that's not a lot of miles. Why are you doing all these services? Well, time is a factor. So dry rod had set in on the timing belt and uh, the fluids had absorbed water. We flushed the brake system. We fr flushed the hydraulic clutch system. Lots of stuff needed to be done to the car maintenance wise just because of the age and time alone. Everything is done now. The car was ready to pick up and in driving, we had a check engine light come up, an EVAP code. So we're diagnosing it today. I've got my brand new red line detection, dual smoke machine. This one we did a video on at SEMA. I was highly impressed with it and had to have one. So about a week after I got back from SEMA, I ordered it and uh, got it in. And this is the first time using it, replacing my decrepit old all tool cheapo Amazon smoke machine. It lasted about three years, but uh, it finally killed over on diagnosing this car. So, First off, we're gonna jump in the car, pull codes, and let you see which code it was, and uh, we'll go from there. So we've got our top Don, already Diag 900 Bluetooth out. Just something really quickly to pull codes with. We don't need to bring the Phoenix Max out for this. Now I scanned it already, and it had an EVAP code. I cleared it, not knowing if it was a fluke or not when he first dropped it off. I put about 170 miles on the clock since then and that evap code came back and man i really hate these old subarus with that beeping that uh comes up when you've got the key on and the ignition off so we'll go through and do a quick scan and i'll show you the code all right so our scan is done and it's the same code we've had the entire time which is p0442 evap system leak small leak so we know we've got an evap leak now i don't think we've actually talked about evap systems on the channel in the past and I've got to turn this stupid ignition off and get this beeping done before we continue. All right, that is much better now that beeping has stopped. So EVAP systems. We haven't really talked about EVAP systems on the channel before as far as I recall, and I don't think we've done any diagnostic videos on EVAP systems. I've got a quick little diagram here to show you. This is a great booklet I got from a Subaru Drivability and Diagnostic class I took uh, back over the summertime. A lot of great information in it, but it'll give me a quick diagram to show you the evap system so evap is the emission system on the car responsible for taking care of fuel vapors so back in the day on cars you had a steel gas tank and you had a carburetor and that was basically it now if you've ever put gas in a gas can on a hot summer day you know that it will swell up because the gas gets hot and it starts evaporating and builds pressure and if you don't vent that pressure, you're gonna have a big kaboom in your gas tank. So in the old cars, back in the day with carburetors, you had a vent on your gas tank to keep it from uh, you know, exploding. Uh, but if you let the car sit long enough, your fuel would evaporate out of your carburetor and your fuel could evaporate out of your fuel tank because it was not a sealed system. It was open to atmosphere. Well, the EVAP system has changed that. It is now a closed system to keep from releasing those hydrocarbons to the atmosphere. So what you have is a diagram here of the major components of the EVAP system. And of course, this being a Subaru. So you've got your fuel tank, you've got your filler neck, your gas cap, the charcoal canister, the vent or drain valve. Subaru refers to it as a drain valve. You've got your purge valve. There's your intake manifold, throttle body, upper part of the engine and your PCM. So when you are sitting with fuel in the tank and pressure rises, you will vent off that pressure to the charcoal canister. The charcoal canister is a canister that is full of activated charcoal. That charcoal will absorb those hydrocarbons from the fuel tank to relieve the pressure in the gas tank, but without releasing those hydrocarbons to atmosphere. Now, on the opposite, on cold days in the winter months, when that pressure drops below atmospheric pressure, 
you will open up the drain valve and draw fresh air through the drain filter, drain valve into the charcoal canister and back into the fuel tank to keep it at a nominal atmospheric pressure. You don't want it getting cold and collapsing from having negative pressure inside, and you don't want it getting hot and exploding from having positive pressure inside. So that is a quick rundown of the system. Now, when you are going down the road and all the stars align and the computer is happy with all the information it's getting, it will open up the purge valve. Now, the purge valve will open up and it will allow your engine to draw those hydrocarbons out of that charcoal canister and burn them, thus preventing the charcoal canister from getting oversaturated with hydrocarbons. So when your fuel pressure gets high or your gasoline starts evaporating and it gets high, pressure it vents off to the charcoal canister the charcoal absorbs that and holds it and then when the time is right the purge valve will open up and burn that burn those hydrocarbons out of the charcoal canister so that is pretty much the basic basic quick two three minute rundown of the evap system now there's a lot more involved to it than that but that's basically it so the main part of the evap system is controlling leakage and being airtight you don't want any of these hydrocarbons escaping the system you need to be airtight all the way around so we have a small leak that's what our code was for a small leak so there are a ton of areas that you could have a leak in an evap system you could have a leaking gasket on your gas cap or if you left your gas cap gas cap loose or left it off you could have a leak in any one of these hoses that go all over the gas tank the charcoal canister up to the engine anywhere in between you could have a solenoid that's not sailing shut or it's hanging open you could have a bad gasket at the fuel pump module the sending unit or anything else there's just so many places that this thing needs to seal up and be air tight so one of the easiest ways and basically the only way to test for leaks in the evap system is with a smoke machine you will inject smoke into the system pressurize it with the smoke and then basically look to see where the smoke is leaking out and that tells you where your leak is in the system so i've already gone through and hooked the smoke machine up and i've smoked this car out luckily this one was very easy to diagnose uh backwards really quickly some primary information when i looked up the diagnostic flow chart for this particular code step one on the flow chart was ensure that there is a subaru genuine factory gas cap installed on the vehicle so when i went back here to check the gas cap we see it's not a subaru genuine gas cap it's actually an aftermarket cap from stant subaru specifies before diagnosing an evap issue to make sure there's a subaru genuine fuel cap on the vehicle before chasing your tail so i've got a brand new subaru genuine gas cap right here that we will be, we will be installing but the gas cap really wasn't our issue but again we're going to put the genuine on it anyway so this being an older ej series engine we have our fuel lines coming from the firewall right here beside the brake master cylinder now our top line is the fuel feed line pressurized line this is a returnless system the older systems had two fuel lines one coming out of a fuel filter that was mounted here and one going back to the tank and then you've got the bottom line here which is your evap line that comes up to the purge solenoid so all these turn into hard lines go under the intake snake around and your purge solenoid is this little solenoid right here with the connector that will open and close to purge those hydrocarbons into the engine to burn them when the time is right so what i've done is taken loose that line stuffed in the cone here for the red line smoke machine to inject smoke and pressurize the system all the way back through to the tank back to the gas cap so as i said i did off screen go ahead and turn the smoke machine on and run it through the system now you do need to cap off your drain valve or vent valve to prevent it from being open and uh, letting the smoke escape which i already did but uh this one's very easy to diagnose or at least i'm pretty sure i've got it diagnosed uh, without much muss and without much fuss so i went ahead and pulled the rear of the interior out so i could access the fuel pump module access door right here and the sending unit door right here so i could get on top and check for any leakage around these now when i pulled this cap off i immediately smelled fuel vapor and of course once i started injecting smoke in the system i started smelling that vaporized smoke i could barely see it with the light but i could smell it so if we look closely we can see evidence that someone has been in here before there are witness marks on the nuts 
There are, uh, you can see where there's witness marks where the clamp here has moved on this hose. Knowing the history of a vehicle sometimes can make diagnosis much, much easier and much simpler. This is a 2006 with 33,000 miles on it. This car did a lot of sitting and not a lot of driving. Well, modern cars with ethanol fuel, ethanol fuel when it sits in the tank can destroy your fuel pump. Someone has been in here and replaced a fuel pump recently. As I said, you can see where this clamp has been moved. Someone has taken this loose. You can see the witness marks where these nuts are not perfectly back on where they were uh, their whole life from 2006. So someone has replaced the fuel pump in here. Now what I am deducing is that someone, when they did that, did not replace this fuel pump module gasket here. It's all of $5.50, but I'm pretty sure that is where our leak is coming from. Again, I smelled fuel vapor when I took this cover off. I smell the smoke vapor. It smells different than the fuel vapor. And I saw a little bit of just a bare amount of smoke. It's really hard to pick up, even with the red line detection uh, light here. Uh, the tank is like almost a quarter full. So there's a lot of airspace in this gas tank. And that's a lot of smoke to pump in there to get a really good stream of smoke out of the entire system. But that's where we're at now, waiting for Subaru to send me that gasket. We're going to replace that gasket, and that should be our EVAP issue solved. Uh, working backwards, what I think happened here is that the car sat for so long that the fuel pump died. So I'm going to replace the fuel pump. They neglected to replace this gasket at the same time. Shortly after they did that, they had an EVAP code come up, which is the same one we had. And they went ahead and said, oh, well, we must have a bad fuel cap. So that's when they replaced the Subaru fuel cap with this aftermarket stamp fuel cap. And uh, that's probably not too long before the customer purchased this car and brought it to me. At least that's what I'm hoping it is based on the evidence I've seen so far. So guys, unfortunately, we're not gonna have a conclusion in this video as that little gasket is on national back order. All three Subaru dealerships in the area called them, they didn't have it. So Subaru Parts Deals is gonna ship it out to me and it'll probably be next week before I can get my hands on it. But I wanted to go ahead and get a video out on this. So behind this cover is your fuel filler neck and your vent lines. There's plenty of places in here to check for smoke and smoke well, leaking out when you're looking for EVAP leaks. You wanna check around the gas cap, make sure that gas cap seal is not bad and not leaking. Uh, a lot of times when they're bad, that orange ring there, you'll see dry rot cracks or tears in it. But again, this is an aftermarket cap and we don't trust aftermarket parts. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, put that super genuine on there. So upon further investigation, looks like this is the actual factory cap. Doesn't look like it was replaced, just the tether broke off of it. But uh, that seal, that gasket doesn't look great compared to the new one. And it was only like 28 bucks. So we're gonna go ahead and replace it anyway. But uh, yeah, just weird that it's got that uh, logo there. I'm pretty sure that's Stant. So I guess Stant is the OE manufacturer for the gas caps on these Subaru vehicles. So I showed you where the purge valve was under the hood right there to the intake manifold right here behind the passenger tire. This is where our EVAP canister is, our charcoal canister is, and some of our lines that go up to the gas tank back and forth. This is uh, a really, painful system to work on, especially on the older Subarus, because so many of the lines are hidden up above stuff. They go up over the cross member on top of the fuel tank, and they run down the frame rail up to the engine. It uh, can be a nightmare to diagnose EVAP concerns. Even when you have the equipment, I mean, that was a like $5,800 uh, smoke machine. I'm not saying you need a $5,800 smoke machine, but it's pretty impossible to diagnose these EVAP concerns without a good smoke machine to leak test. So guys, I know a lot of you have asked me questions in the past about EVAP codes and EVAP diagnostics, and it's really, really impossible for me to give you any guidance online in your emails or comments in pointing you in the right direction to diagnose EVAP systems. And hopefully this video has been a way for you to see that, that it's very hard to just take a guess at what could be the cause of a leaking EVAP system. There's literally feet and feet of hoses, solenoids, gaskets, all kinds of things. And it doesn't take but the most minute small leak to throw a check engine light sometimes. So you gotta have the smoke machine, you've gotta have the proper test equipment and tools to get in there and do it. So a lot of times with EVAP stuff, it's not DIY friendly. 
it's better just to pay a competent certified technician to do the diagnostic work and maybe the repair for you than trying to figure it out yourself because again, it's pretty hard to without the proper tooling and the proper tooling is not cheap and is not DIY friendly. So guys, there is a quick little overview of EVAP systems and checking out an EVAP code for a small leak in a 2006 Forester. I will make an update, either an updated video or a community post or something, or pin comment, let you guys know if that was the solution for this EVAP leak and this EVAP code, if it was just that fuel pump module gasket. With that said, thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you all in the next one.